So in part one and two of this YouTube video series, I showed you how to make the arrow styles of one of the most famous archers in American history, known as Saxon Pope. Everything in those videos was based off of what was written in his 1923 book titled Hunting with a Bow and Arrow. In that book, he just describes how he made his arrows and his broadheads, talks about archery in general and hunting um, with bows and arrows. In this video, I wanted to talk about the archery equipment of other well-known archery figures in uh, traditional archery history, starting with Art Young. Art Young was good friends with Saxon Pope. Art Young made his arrows in a very similar fashion to Saxon Pope. He did have some distinct differences though. Saxon Pope had a sharp barb on his arrowheads where Art Young had more of a half crescent at the base of his. Saxon Pope and Art Young also had very distinct fletching styles. Art Young was known for having a more rounded parabola shaped fletching. These are also the colors they painted their arrows for their grizzly bear hunt. Pope's was red, white, and black where Art Young painted his arrows red, yellow, and black on this hunt. This is an arrow reproduction of one of the most important figures in archery history, a man by the name of Will Compton, also known as Chief Compton. He was born in 1863 and at the age of seven moved to Nebraska to live among the Sioux Indians. There he learned how to make uh, bows and arrows and how to hunt with them. Later in life he moved to Oregon and learned how to make U longbows. He eventually went down to California. He took over a thousand billets of U wood with him. When he met Ishii, uh, he was introduced to Dr. Saxon Pope and they hit it off and became friends and Chief Compton taught Saxon Pope how to make the English U longbow. Chief Compton also met a man by the name of Art Young and introduced him to Saxon Pope and so the three of them along with Ishii would go out hunting with the bow and arrow together. So Chief Compton really mentored Saxon Pope and Art Young and uh, we owe a lot of gratitude towards Chief Compton for his role in traditional archery history. Another important figure in uh, Saxon Pope's life was a man by the name of Will Thompson. Uh, the Thompson brothers grew up just after the Civil War in the South and were not allowed to have guns so they were two young boys just living wild and free hunting with bows and arrows. They wrote a book called The Witchery of Archery which is just a classic book that anyone interested in archery should read. This arrow is an example of the one that was sent to Saxon Pope by Will Thompson. His colors were black, red, gold, and green and the point he had was a lance shaped point that fit into a metal socket. Another figure that got me really interested in archery was a man from Oregon by the name of Chester Stevenson. His writings were just really inspiring and got me excited about shooting traditional style, the English U longbow. You can read all about Chester Stevenson's life in this book by Nick Knott titled From the Den of the Old Bow Hunter. Uh, it's all about Chet Stevenson's life and uh, it's really exciting. I'm especially interested in Chet Stevenson because I had family members who used to know them and actually had some of his gear passed down to me. So this is an original Chester Stevenson arrow. Most of the Chet Stevenson arrows I've seen uh, are taper heavily. This is an incredibly thin knock. So the last few inches he really tapered his arrows. He's also known for putting uh, these nice little aluminum knocks on his arrows and just really well made. He had many different cresting styles and also used many different styles of broadheads. This is an older broadhead on here. I think it's called a uh, Case King broadhead. In addition to having one of Chester Stevenson's original arrows, I have one of his original uh, U longbows. This thing is backed uh, and I have never pulled it or even strung it because I just think it's too valuable to risk breaking. He's set it up to be shooting either right or left handed. Chet Stevenson didn't sign many of his bows, but he had a pretty distinct way of making them, so it's fairly easy to tell an original Chet Stevenson bow. Um, they're just beautiful pieces of work. Here's the cover of a traditional bow hunter magazine for December, January 2011, and similar arrow and uh, bow as the one on the cover. I also inherited several books that were owned by Chet Stevenson, and uh, just really excited to have a piece of archery history that is signed by such a well-known archer. I also have several arrows that were made by another uh, Oregon archer and one of the most important archery figures from the 1920s through the 1950s. Uh, these 
have a initials BGT written on him, which stands for Ben Garrison Thompson, also known as BG Thompson. He was an incredible archer, hunter. BG Thompson, along with John Davis in 1927, helped start one of the first major archery uh, magazines called Ye Sylvan Archer. This thing ran from 1927 through World War II and uh, is just full of archery history. So, B.G. Thompson was a really key figure and wrote a lot of articles in these uh, magazines on the Ye Sylvan archers. Another archery figure that's played a huge role in my own hunting philosophy is a man by the name of Jay Massey. He's more recent than Pope and Young and Chet Stevenson. He died in 1997, but his writings really encourage you to make your own archery gear and to hunt more in the primitive style. He's written several books, including Bow Hunting Alaska's Wild Rivers, The Bowyer's Craft, The Thousand Campfires, and The Book on Primitive Archery. Jay Massey also wrote quite a few magazine articles, which I've read and really enjoyed. He wrote for uh, Instinctive Archer. This is their premiere issue, and uh, this magazine is no longer in publication, but really great. He wrote for the premiere issue of uh, Primitive Archer magazine, and also wrote an article in the premiere issue and uh, several after that of Traditional Bow Hunter Magazine. Traditional Bow Hunter Magazine is my favorite magazine on archery. It's a great resource for archery history and uh, learning how to improve your archery skills. I have every issue since it started in 1989 and have always loved um, just getting the magazine and reading all the articles. Two issues ago, uh, the archery gear that I made on the YouTube video series on Utsi the Iceman, the backpack, the quiver, and the bow were featured on the cover of the magazine, which was really exciting. I'm friends with a photographer by the name of Jerry Gowans Jr. who has done more cover shots for the magazine than anyone. Just really excited to see my archery gear on the magazine cover. Then the one that's in stores right now, the most current one, I actually wrote a story about hunting with primitive archery gear, and so I was able to get published. The story I wrote in the magazine is titled Blacktail Poison, and uh, what I wrote about was, I didn't tell you in my YouTube video, but the foreshaft for the arrow I killed that deer with was actually made out of poison oak, which is a cousin to poison ivy. I actually made an arrow out of that, and it's kind of a funny story. Uh, how it still gave me a rash, but I have always just struggled with getting poison oak in the woods and decided to make an arrow out of it just to overcome that. So if you have the June-July 2014 issue of Traditional Bow Hunter magazine, I have my first article in there. Then also just recently in the mail I got the August-September 2014 issue and another photo that Jerry took made it on the cover. This is me pulling my U longbow with my Utsi the Iceman gear. So I'm just going to end this video with some more photos of uh, Chet Stevenson equipment. Actually, it was interesting when I published uh, the last video on Saxon Pope, I got a personal message from a YouTube viewer who owned a large collection of Chet Stevenson gear and let me uh, view it and take some photos of it. So he has a bunch of bows and arrows and photos and different Chet Stevenson gear. So I'll just end with a little slideshow of original Chet Stevenson bows and arrows. Again, you should all get this book from the Den of the Old Bow Hunter. It's just so inspirational and it really played a big part in my own um, love for archery. You can buy it at Echo Archery at my friend Carson Brown's website. You can also get different um, archery gear, especially primitive archery gear. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed learning about some of the archery history that uh, influenced me.